in search of the most innovative exhibitors here at Form Next 2021, I have an appointment with Emilio Juarez of HP. Hi, Emilio. How are you doing? Hello. Very well. Thank you. <laughs> very well. Your booth is extremely busy, so it, yep. it seems as if uh, what you brought to Frankfurt this year is appealing to the people and they love what you're ex exhibiting, right? It is. In fact, uh, what we are showing is how our technology has evolved into a point of maturity in which we can industrialize applications for heavy volume production, mm -hmm. which is completely differential. And this is what is attracting so much interest. We, we take it as a whole production process from raw material to final part. And that's what we are showing here, all the stages that you need to cover. So it's beyond printing, it's managing the whole production flow. And I'm absolutely eager to see it. Let's go inside. Let's go there. <laughs> So that looks quite a bit like in a, in a real-world factory, right? Exactly, the setup you have exactly. here? Exactly. What we are trying is to reflect here what would be the setup of a factory, uh -huh. where you have the in source of the raw materials, uh -huh. okay, the management of this raw material, that is in our case the powder. Mm -hmm. We have some devices that help us manage all this. And once you have created the, the build that is needs to be automated and needs to be go as efficient as uh, optimized as possible, then you move to the real production process. Uh -huh. All this needs to be controlled through dedicated software that allows you to keep always under control or through, through the applications that let you know how the systems are working. Typically, you would have a good number of printers working in parallel, maybe even distributed around the world. So you need to be able to track how performance is and go back to whether there is any issue to manage as soon as possible. And I guess this is a cloud-based system so you can uh, use it around the world. Exactly, exactly. I mean, all our printers are uh, connected and we are capturing information on the working parameters, not the parts, so that we can know how they are performing and we can even anticipate if they need some preventive uh, in maintenance to avoid any down uh, downtime. Okay, and what is the next station? So the, the next station is uh, the printing itself. Okay, so here the printing takes place. And uh, I mean, having repetitive uh, parts, having consistent quality is something that is a must. This is something that we have, let's say, take already for granted. So for us, what is more relevant at this point is how we manage the whole flow, okay? Because good parts, they will be good parts. But then how do we take labor out of the process? This implies automating as much as possible. And mm -hmm. the next step is taking the parts out of the printer. Okay. And cleaning them, obviously. This will come right after, okay? okay. So just taking the parts out of the, the, the cake is what we do with this unpacking station. It is fully automated. You wow. can modify parameters and so on to make it adapted to the different type of production that you run. Uh -huh. And then you have the parts without uh, powder. You still need to clean a little bit with another uh, automated process. And then you may need to uh, terminate the part, let's say, by giving the appearance that you want to have in them. Yep. These are all different types of post-processing systems. Okay, that is truly fascinating. And what are the industries you are aiming at? What are the customers um, uh, industries? There are a whole variety, but there are some that are really very heavily adopting our technology. We have industrial customers, uh -huh. among them automotive. We have consumer customers. We have medical customers that are very rapidly adopting our technology. So let's start with automotive, I'd say. Let's go and see. Let's it. go there. Wow, that is surprising. There is a huge number of displays and, uh, and examples here. What industries are, are you serving? Well, all types of industries. And here you can find from parts of uh, production lines to uh, grippers for uh, taking parts out of an injection molding device. Okay, uh -huh. so it's a, a whole type a variety of, of things. Some of them are based on moving from metal to plastic, which yeah. makes uh, all the, the full machine lighter and more eff efficient. Okay, okay. Um, what are the, um, the different speeds that the industries have? Is there a, uh, an industry where you can say they are extremely much faster than the other industries, or are they more or less even? 
I would say that it's more dependent on the, the size of the companies. So mm -hmm. there are companies that are going to grow big but take a lot of time to prepare. Large corporations need to go through a lot of internal validations and certifications. Uh, companies that are smaller size, they can make decisions faster and they are adopting faster. But at the end, all of them will end up benefiting from additive manufacturing. Okay, and I've seen that you're also caring for consumer goods, so I would yeah. like to have a look at that. Let's go and see. <laughs> okay, this is one typical consumer good. Is it 3D printed? Yeah, it is 3D printed as well as many of the other parts that you can see here. The application is really varied and you can find it in all types of sports goods uh -huh. that help for performance or for comfort. Okay. But it's not only consumer goods, you can find this also in cosmetics where the finishing is really, really important. The, the capacity to reproduce detail and to have a metallization on it is very, very relevant because it needs to give the, uh, the idea and the perception of quality and value okay and then there are some other things like uh, consumer electronics we have uh, some examples like uh, speakers that are producing one single part so that you avoid any type of um, uh, undesired effects uh -huh. okay and you get the purest sound possible I see okay and there is one further industry which is important here at the Form Next as well, which is medical. And yeah. I guess you have some solutions for them as well, right? Yeah, I would love to show it to you. <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> Let's go. I would say the medical sector is the one which asks most about individualization, right? Definitely. I mean, <laughs> each of us, we are different. And each of us uh, need to have a, a dedicated, specially customized spot uh -huh. to get the best out of the potential treatment. Here we have a, a whole variety again of different applications, from surgical guides to uh, corrective uh, helmets for boys uh, to uh, scoliosis braces or uh, uh, sockets for prosthetics. So it's a whole variety, each of them tuned to the specific patient. And I guess seeing all that, um, that the medical sector is changing a lot uh, with your technology. So you can move very much with your technology, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. And, and there are some of them that I, I love especially. So if I, if I may mention one, is this scoliosis brace. Okay. So th this is the reason why I like it so much is because it, the, we have been able, or the, the doctors and designers have been able to produce a nice part, not just a functional part that does it work, but also a nice part. So now, what before was something that uh, patients were hiding as much as possible under the clothes. Now even young ladies want to use it because it's cool. So they are adopting <laughs> the treatment in a very nice way and they are not refusing to take it. Okay, and you are helping them to cure even in a fashionable way. Yeah, this is, this is the <laughs> nicest part of it. What a nice story. Emilio, thank you so much for your Thanks insights you. into uh, HP's this year's uh, booth. Thank you so much and thank you for watching and see you next time at Form Next.